إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوى إن الحمد لله حمدا خالدا مع خلوده لا منتهى له دون علمه وأهل الثناء والمجد أحق ما قال العبد وكلنا له عباد وعباد الله سوانا كثير كثير وليس لنا رب سواه نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه ادى الامانه ونصح لهذه الامه فتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك عباد الله أوصيكم ونفس الفقير الذليل بتقوى الله عباد الله اتقوا الله ما استطعتم اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم اتقوا الله يا عباد الله لعلكم ترحمون اتقوا الله يا عباد الله لعلكم تفلحون واعلموا أن العاقبة للمتقين Dear servants of Allah Dear slaves of Allah be conscious and mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout your days and your nights. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're dealing with your family and your neighbors. Be mindful and thoughtful of Allah. Put your fear and your hope in Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised us constantly in the Quran, after I seek refuge from the devils and their whispers. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. Ya ayyuha al-nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فقد فاز فوزا عظيما these are the words of Allah. The greatest words that you will ever hear are the words of Allah. Words that cannot be duplicated. Words that cannot be fabricated. Words that cannot be altered. They are eternal just as He is Jalla Fi They are His words. They are not His creation. The greatest words, the most profound words are the words of Allah. And the greatest of all examples is the example of Muhammad, Abu Qasim sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The one who has left us on the authentic, most clear guidance. His methodology, his way will allow you to walk this journey called life on a clear, evident, safe, 
path, whether you are walking by the day or by the night. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunnah allows you to walk in peace, allows you to journey in peace and prosperity. That is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is his methodology and what he taught us. He taught us as to how to walk, how to talk, how to sit, how to eat, how to sleep, how to breathe, how to give, how to take. So we follow and uphold his sunnah, for it is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was, as described by Aisha Ummuna radiallahu anha wa ardaha, he was a walking Qur'an. He embodied the teachings, the practice, the etiquette, the understanding that is in the words of Allah, the Qur'an. That is what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's sunnah translates to. And he warned us, and he warned the Sahaba of the innovations, the fabrications that people try to embed within this deen. They strand from cultures and opinions that do not come from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And they try to practice the deen through ways that have no relevance and no evidence. They're called bid'ah, innovations. And these unfortunately are widespread and they will lead you astray. And they will lead you eventually down a deep dark path. And at the end of that path, on the day of judgment, you will stand before Allah and you will say, I worshipped you. And it will be said that no, you did not worship me according to the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So your worship has been rejected. And you will understand and then you will heed these words. Kullu bid'atin dalala, kullu dalalatin fin Seek refuge, my brothers and my sisters, from the torment of the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us upon the guidance of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Allahumma ameen. Day in and day out, mankind, regardless of what age, what category, what status, where you live, how much you make, we all seek guidance. <laughs> We all seek a means of understanding, a sense of belonging. And subhanAllah, I noticed in myself and many of you that we look, we look to sources to tell us as to what is happening around us in order to have a clear idea as to where we belong and where we are headed. And this is a detriment this is a very dangerous step that we are taking. How many a times do you check your phone for the news feed? How many a times do you turn on the radio as you're driving just to hear the events, the current affairs? How many a times do you go on the social media platforms and you are reading and you are watching? You're trying to get clarity. You're trying to gauge as to what kind of world it is we live in. This is absolutely normal. However, it has consumed us. And it has propelled us away from the true guidance, from the true source of knowledge and fact and wisdom. Because we, as Muslims, we have the absolute guidance. And yet we are looking to these social media platforms for guidance. We are looking to the news media to tell us what is happening and what happened and what will happen. And this is a detriment to our deen. In the words of Allah, the words of Allah, as I mentioned, there is nothing similar to them. The most profound words that you will ever hear are the words of Allah. And I'll give you one ayah and think about this. And this was revealed over 1,400 years ago. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ كِتَابًا فِيهِ ذِكُرُكُمْ أَفَلَا تَعْقِنُونَ 
1,400 years ago, and this ayah is still relevant today, we have revealed, and we is majestic plural, we have revealed to you a book, the Qur'an, Fihi dhikrukum, it has your mention. It mentions who you are, what you are, what you're doing, your state, your position, at this time. Allah revealed the book to you. And this book has your mention. Will you not realize? Will you not grasp? Will you not comprehend? And subhanallah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hikmat in baligha wa qudrat in muqtadira, He chose and designated the prophets to their specific peoples with specific miracles or signs, if you will. Musa alayhi salam came to his people with a sign that absolutely destroyed and demolished all their sorcery. And at that time, sorcery and magic was prominent. The sorcerers would overwhelm the people. They had a lock and a stranglehold of power over the people's minds and hearts and they deceived their eyes. And Musa السلام, came with a sign from Allah that destroyed the magic, that overwhelmed the magic. It was something beyond magic. Isa السلام, Jesus, came to his people at a time where medicine was elevating to new heights. People were seeking treatments and cures. And he came with a sign that stunned and shocked everyone. He could blow life into a lifeless vessel of clay and it would fly away as a bird. A blind man who's never seen the light of day if Isa السلام, would wipe over him by the will of Allah, he could see. So these signs or miracles were relevant to their peoples. And then you have Muhammad وسلم, who came to a tribal, tyrannical people, the Arabs. And these people, they had nothing notable except their linguistics. There was no one on the face of the earth and to this day that could compare to the Arabs and their linguistics. Al Arab Kanu Arbab al Fasaha wal Balaha wa Fursan al Bayani wal Khataba. The Arabs had profound literature, a marvel of linguistics, free verse poetry, and descriptive narrative. And here, a man from them, an illiterate, unlettered man who never spoke free verse poetry, never wrote, and could not read. He comes to them with the most profound words that mention not only them, but you and those after you. <laughs> They were stunned, awestruck. Anyone who's anyone who heard the Quran would stop dead in their tracks. And those that understood it was not from a man, but it was divine decree, and they did not wish to believe it, they plugged their ears and they ran away. So we as a people, we have left this aside. We have left the words of Allah aside. That He designated for our guidance. And we say, we want guidance. And we want proof and testimony. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, if you look to the Qur'an, it is absolute guidance and absolute proof. And if you want truth, 
You want facts and you want to uphold it. You look to the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, and it is the truth. And by the truth it was descended. And within it is the truth. It is the true source. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إن الله تعالى يرفع بهذا الكتاب أقوام ويضع به آخرين. By this book, by the word of Allah, the Quran, Allah will elevate the peoples. And at the same time, if they put that book aside, He will belittle them. And He will make them nothing on the earth. He will put them at the lowest position if they abandon this book. If you want to be consistent and to maintain consistency, this is the key to success. You can be good at something, but you need to be consistent with it in order to be notable for it. If you want consistency, it is within the Quran. If you want to be consistent upon the guidance, it is within the Quran. If you want the absolute, the best, the impeccable, the perfect, the infallible, it is within the Quran. The best, uncomparable. There is not a single mistake. It is where? Is it on Twitter? Is it on Facebook? Is it on any of these platforms? No. It is within the words of Allah, the Quran. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروه فإنه هو الغفور